Unity's machine learning framework ML Agents is a large framework with a lot of features and hacks you probably didn't know about. Stay tuned to learn how you can train faster and work more efficiently in ML Agents. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy. Number 1. Adding your own statistics to TensorBoard. You have probably used TensorBoard to observe the progress of your agent. And it is a very good tool for that. Especially when comparing different runs with different actions and observations. It helps you to figure out what went well and what didn't. But the information listed there is very general and sometimes not specific enough for the needs of your unique game. Luckily, adding your own statistics is very easy via the stats recorder object. Go to your agent and create a reference to the stats recorder. This is made simple. It is accessible globally through the academy via academy.instance.statsrecorder. Now you can add a statistic by calling the add method with the name to be displayed in the tensorboard and the value. This method is quite smart as well. By default, it already averages all the values collected in the last 10,000 steps. You can change this value in the trainer config file if you want to, but I think it's fine, so I will stick to 10,000. In some cases, you don't want the average value, but rather the most recent one, like in the case of a high score, for example. This is also possible. Just add another parameter to the function call with stats aggregation method dot most recent and there you have it. Check out my last video to see this in action. I will add multiple statistics to my simple example like amount of coins collected, coins in a row and the time it took to collect a coin. For now, the coin and the agent always respawn at the same position, so it should be trivial for our agent to figure it out. Let's train the agents and check out the tensorboard. As always, it's just tensorboard minus minus logdeer equals and then the path to your summaries. There you have it. You can see the coins collected go up with each step and the time it takes to collect the coins go down. Nice! This is our baseline for now. We will take a look at this board again later, when we have more runs to compare to. Number 2 adding a small penalty at each step. If you want the agent to finish a task quickly, a simple hack can be to add a small penalty at every step the agent does not complete the task. The value of this penalty very much depends on your game, but is probably in the neighborhood of minus 0.001 to minus 0.01 each step. It's a small thing, but it can make a huge difference. If you have the max number of steps parameter set in your agent to reset it after a certain amount of time, there's a neat way to add this penalty. Just divide minus one by max steps. This will probably be the right amount of penalty in most cases, so use it as a starting point. In my first test, I hard coded a penalty of minus 0.05 at each step, and this is what happened. Yeah, the agents basically committed suicide. Why? Their goal is simply to maximize the reward in each episode and by falling off the platform as fast as possible, they could at least minimize the punishment. This penalty was clearly too high. After tweaking the penalty though, the results were crazy good. I expected a speed up, but not one like this. The amount of coins collected were 10 times as high in the same amount of time. They got faster at collecting coins real quick. If your game profits from being quicker at whatever the agent is supposed to do, I highly recommend at least giving this little trick a shot. Cue to the next tip. Number three, subscribe to learn more about ML agent. Uh, ah shit, wrong slide. Number three, generative adversarial imitation learning. You are probably aware that you can use your own gameplay to train agents in a process called imitation learning. The downside of imitation learning is the amount of demonstrations you require and the fact that the agents will never be better than you. But there's a way to use less demonstrations and have the possibility of agents getting better than you and it's called Gale. 
It's similar to the reinforcement learning we already know, but this time the agent is rewarded for behaving similar to your gameplay. In ML agents, a second neural network, called the discriminator, is used to judge how similar an agent behaves to your gameplay and assigns rewards accordingly. Both networks learn and improve, constantly trying to outsmart the other one. The agent gets better in faking to be you and the discriminator gets better in figuring out which observations and actions provided are belonging to the real one. You may be thinking, ah, this is similar to those GAN networks who created those fake faces and you are correct. First, let's make our game a bit harder and respawn the coin at a random position each time they get collected. Of course, it's still not much of a challenge, but again, it's supposed to be an example and not a real use case. We can set up Gale via the trainer configuration file. Under rewards, just add Gale. You can combine Gale with the normal reinforcement learning if you want to. In general, I would say this is a good idea. The strength can be set anywhere between 0 and 1. If you want to use Gale more as a push in the right direction without the agent copying your actions one to one, use a value between 0.01 and 0.1. Next, I will set the use actions parameter to true. This determines if the discriminator network only compares the observations or the observations and the actions. As I want my agent to not only visit the same states, but also behave similarly to the actions I will record, true is the right call for me. The rest I will leave at default settings for now. I provided a link in the description to the documentation describing all the parameters in detail if you're interested. The last thing we need to provide are demonstrations, but first, of course, we have to record some. Before we check out how to do that, let's move on to number four. Number four. When recording demonstrations, you can cheat. When you record gameplay for Gale or imitation learning, you should always find a way to cheat. Why? Because you can. In this case, there is no shame in cheating. The opposite is true. If the demonstrations you record are better, then your agent will do better. In the end, it's not about how you got there, but how it performs. In a shooting game, for example, you could control the movement and program an aimbot to do the shooting. Or another cheat that works in many games is slowing the time down with the press of a button. Quick and complex movements can be done easier this way. Imagine playing Super Mario with half the speed. It's way easier and the actions and observations you record are still the same. Of course, you can only record half as much in the same time, but that's why I recommend doing it with the press of a button. In my case, the game is so simple that we can cheat to the point where human gameplay isn't even required. Of course, usually this isn't the case because then why are you even using machine learning in the first place? But it is a good way to showcase how to do it. Let's jump into our agent script, more specifically the heuristic function. Whatever you do here will be used for the demonstrations you record. In our case, it is very simple. We first calculate a vector pointing in the direction of the coin and then normalize it. If we put the x and y axis of the direction pointing to the coin into the actions out, we pretty much have a bot that moves in a straight line towards the coin. Let's press play and see what happens. Oh yeah, this is what we like to see. To record this inhuman gameplay, we have to add the demonstrations recorder component to our agent. There are three parameters. Record, which you can set to true to start recording right from the beginning, as well as a demonstration name and directory. This determines the file name and location of our demos. Just put whatever you think is best. Don't worry about changing the name after each recording. Unity handles this for you and adds numbers to the end of the file name. Nice. In this case, we can even set the time scale very high because our script doesn't care how fast the game runs. This lets us record an hour worth of gameplay in a few minutes. Definitely cheating. Let's add the path to our demonstrations file to the trainer config and start training. Go! 
Off-camera, I let a normal reinforcement learning agent train in this new environment, where the coins are respawning at a different position each time, just to have something we can compare to. Let's check out the results. To the surprise of, well, no one, probably, our Gale agent trained much faster. It pretty much performed better in every single way. If there's a way for you to record useful demonstrations in your game, you should probably start using Gale right now. Number 5. Initialize from previous runs. You may know the resume command to continue training an agent. But if you want to start a new training run based on the previously trained model, just use minus minus initialize minus from equals and then the run ID you are referring to. This comes in handy if your game changed and you need to train a new model, but the old model is still better than random. Then just use this command to kick off your new model where the last one started. That's it. Thank you very much. You can support me on Patreon if you find my videos useful. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe and like this video. As always, your feedback is much appreciated and honestly, it's what keeps me going. I have gained a lot of subscribers in the last few weeks and I'm very thankful for all of you. I hope you enjoyed. Peace.